Hi there, Dr. Joseph Martin. Inner space is far greater than outer space. Basically, this is a, a call to consciousness for the scientists of the world and the, the would-be scientists, those young people in, in the listening field here who are interested in becoming scientists. Um, as a philosopher of science and as an historian of science, and as a scientist myself, I have degrees in many things, including um, biology, psychology, and astronomy I've studied, and other sciences, medicine, and many, many sciences, and as an anthropologist as well. And I'd like to show the limitations of the Western scientific method. Now, for the last few hundred years, we have had Western science, and it's not very old, is it, when you compare it to 10,000 years of yoga and meditation in the East, or 2 million years of indigenous wisdom and training. But the Western method, which is of the hypothesis, the, the testing, and the observations, and charting results, rational results that are all statistical, and quantitative, not necessarily qualitative, and then retesting and reformulating the, the uh, hypothesis and trying to come up with uh, some solutions. This is the Western scientific method that we use when we study in university. And unfortunately for the world, it's the only one that people use today because even in China, where they have thousands of years of ancient medicine, it's now not really taught. Uh, is uh, the Western medical tradition. This is a challenge. This is not good because there is far more that you can learn and know and understand and therefore create results for when you use other methods other than just the one scientific, rational, materialist, um, Western model of doing science. You know, I was watching um, some interesting uh, <clears throat> videos last night on the television about outer space and astronomy and so on and in people who live on the, the um, International Space Station. It's always interesting to me uh, when I hear them talk, I listen quite clearly to carefully how they talk and as wonderful as it is and we all love stars and galaxies and so on, I'm very much aware and my different uh, backgrounds as a scientist with different scientific methods. I have four methods of science that I utilize, not just the one I was trained in at the Canadian universities. When you're locked into a cultural mode of perception that's based on the cultural values of your society, in this case, Western Canadian society, and when you're locked into the values and beliefs of what the limitations are of science or life, then it really is a box that you use when you're trying to be a scientist. And the goal of the scientist, remember, is to discover unknown things, unknown territory, unknown concepts even, and unknown energies. One can very rarely move outside of that cultural training unless one knows what one doesn't know. And that's the key. My call to scientists here is please learn what you don't know and understand that there are other ways of knowing. That's the substance of other videos. So, you know, <laughs> when you use the Eastern methods that are in fact way more ancient and older than the Western scientific methods, they're the inner space ways of knowing where the knower, the knowing and the known are all expanded into a oneness, a one awareness. Where we, as with this Western scientific method, it's always about the known. And there's no sense of a knower or a knowing. It's an objectified, separated distance between yourself as a scientist and some object or some object of study, and that's just the known. But when you're objectifying everything and you um, don't have a background in philosophy, of ontology, which is the nature of reality, or epistemology, how we know what we know. And this is what I would suggest to scientists in training. They need to have re a requirement for a basic philosophy course in epistemology. They need to know how we know what we know. And then a science scientist without an ego will be able to see that his or her mind 
is actually blocked and locked into a, a very small little framework of mental perception of what's possible to think about. And it's more than just finding some known. When you know that there are other ways of knowing things and you can access the other three ways besides just the rational way of knowing, then science can expand, can expand greatly. Now we know that the present theories of science, whether they have to do with astrophysics or quantum mechanics or string theory or how big the universe is, is limited by the history of science as well. Because we know that we used to think that the Earth was the center of our solar system. Now we know it's not. We didn't understand what gravity was, and for many cases, physicists still don't know. But if one used the other three ways of knowing, you would understand what gravity is, and it's far beyond just simply a scientific principle. So when we can get out of our ego minds and get out of our cultural preconceptions or cultural boxes, of how we think, we can learn to think in other ways. And this is the key. We have the Eastern traditions from India and from China, whether it's in medicine like Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, or we have the intuition of the indigenous peoples for a couple of million years of all the cross-cultural tribes, ancient and modern. These are unique and differing ways of knowing that will advance science if only scientists in training in universities were able to study these different methods. I know myself as an anthropologist, when I was living with the Mohawk and other cultures where we didn't speak English, I had to get out of my own mindset and defrag from all the limitations of a training in an English language, training in a Western 20th century society, and try to think and allow myself to think in ways that were very different for instance, time and space are very different for indigenous peoples. There is no digital time or space. Everything's analog, analogical, and everything is just ongoing flow of more and more of the same. And so even just to conceive of this as a scientist, is um, it, it's, it's, it's almost impossible because everything in Western science is digitalized and fractured into tiny little segments that can be measurable. Well, science isn't like that because, or needn't be like that, because life isn't like that. The universe doesn't evolve like that, and human beings don't evolve like that, and science cannot evolve like that either. Scientists must be trained, apart from all the hegemony of the corporations, the money and the funding and the research, that tries to funnel this all into a very a ridiculously rational, materialistic kind of um, applied way to I create money for corporations. That's not science either, is it? And so this is a call to the purity of what science can be and needs to be if our society is going to exist and our civilization is going to move into the next phase of evolution and if individuals are allowed to move into the next phase of evolution. So we have a need for people to study the history of science, the philosophy of science, and to get out of their cultural misperceptions or cultural boxes. And we need to know what we don't know, and that's the key to learning, isn't it? To be open-minded and open-ended. And it's very clear from some of the studies, like heart math, that the heart has ways of knowing of which the mind knows absolutely nothing. That's a quote from the great French philosopher and mathematician Blaise Pascal from a couple of centuries ago. The heart has ways of knowing of which the mind knows nothing. And I would say to those who train in the deepest, highest kinds of I am yoga or Raja yoga, Yana yoga, that you as scientists, and I'm calling to the chemists, the biochemists, the medical doctors, the astronomers, the astrophysicians, uh, to look at and train in higher meditative knowledge, knowing, and the experience of being in the knowing and the known, and being the knower, and things will just come to your mind well beyond what you were culturally modified into in the school system and the university system. That will give you the farthest, most infinite reaches of outer space, which is simply a mirror of inner space. They are one and the same every 
atom inside your body is a galaxy in the known universe, and that's how this is mirrored. You know, my good friend Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist and Jungian specialist as well, when we spent time together in the 1970s and the 1980s, and one of it, we had a great time together. And here was an open-minded man who was very intelligent and well-loved worldwide now. And we'll go down in the history of science two or three hundred years from now far more, uh, with far more background and knowledge and wisdom that he shared with the peoples of the world than most scientists could ever imagine in their own training and own work and research. So, and, and one of his books was the last book, uh, The um, Inner Reaches of Outer Space. I'd like to turn that title of his book, which is an interesting book, on its head. And I'd like to suggest that the future of science should be titled this, The Infinite Farthest Reaches of Inner Space not just the inner reaches of outer space, but the farthest infinite reaches of inner space. Because when you know how to let your mind expand into the infinite, you will be shown things and know things, science, pure science, pure science of physics, um, atomic energy, and the chemical table, the evolution of the universe from hydrogen to helium and so on into galaxies, how stars expand and compress and expand and compress and how the universe does that, how our human physiology does that. So much you can learn when you switch it up and change your, your thinking about what science really can be as a, and a method to understand and know all that can be known in the universe down to the smallest grain of sand and atom in yourself and in everything. So I'll leave that with us now. And I would love to hear from some scientists about uh, how they're finding themselves uh, in this process. I know that, for instance, the Dalai Lama has done a lot of research with scientists from the Hindu tradition who have this training and background, and not only degrees from Western universities, but in their mind, because of their yoga and meditation practices, they have expanded physics and astrophysics and biology and cellular physiology down to the mitochondrial level and beyond, far more than they would have ever have done just with a Western scientific training. So let's all go for the inner infinite spaces inside ourselves and create a much better science to change this world quickly so that we can all survive into the 21st century. All my blessings to you, Dr. Joseph Martin.